Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. Uh, today we will talk about particular case of reflection. Reflection of the parabolic mirror. Now, this lecture is part of the course Physics for Teens presented on Unisor.com. I suggest you to watch this lecture from the website. So you go to Unisor.com, choose the course Physics for Teens, then go to Waves and um, Properties of Light. And this is one of the properties of the light, reflection. That's what we are talking about. Previous lecture was about reflection of the flat surface. And this lecture is about reflection of the curved surface. In this particular case, it's parabolic mirror. Now, this website, unisor.com, uh, contains the prerequisite course, Mass for Teens, uh, which contains the knowledge which you definitely need to study physics uh, seriously. Now, um, this is for teens, which means it's basically high school and maybe a little bit, a little bit after the high school, um, uh, and uh, it's it's kind of advanced, but it's still within the reach of, of everybody. So, if you accurately take the course, one lecture after another, you will succeed. Um, now. Um, Back to reflection. Now, first of all, we have to address somehow how reflection happens of the curved surface. Now, the previous lecture, as I was saying, was about the flat plane reflection. And we have proven, using the um, Fermat, Fermat's principle of the least time, that reflection of the flat surface is um, obeying certain laws of reflection. Um, and the primary is that the incidence angle is equal to reflection angle, which we kind of intuitively understand. <coughs> now, what about the curved surface? Well, to prove what I'm going to say right now is kind of difficult and definitely beyond the course of this um, uh, definitely be on this course. Um, but again, it's intuitively um, kind of obvious that if you have some kind of curved surface, I don't even know how to, whatever. Um, if you have a curved surface and you have a beam of light which falls on it, it falls on certain area and if the surface is smooth, and we are talking only about the smooth surface, then the, um, the, the principle I'm talking about is that reflection of this point on a surface is equivalent to reflection of the tangential plane which is at that particular point, tangential to a surface. So the smooth surface obviously has a tangential plane at any point. So whenever the beam of light, ray of light, falls onto a specific point of a surface, this particular neighborhood of that point can be flattened out and, 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 and should be considered, instead of it, it should be considered a tangential plane. And then the beam will reflect off the tangential plane exactly as we were talking about the previous lecture with angle of incidence equal to angle of reflection, with a normal to the tangential being in the same plane as reflecting and in, uh, incident lights, etc. So, that's the principle, which I'm not going to basically prove in a way I have proven in the previous lecture using the principle, the Fermat's principle of the least time, um, that it occurs actually according to these laws of reflection. But if we will consider this particular approach to replace any um, curved surface with a tangential uh, plane at the point of um, uh, falling life, light, then basically we know everything about how it behaves, because it's flat, uh, surface, it's a plane, tangential plane, and we know the laws of reflection. 
So I will use this principle again. Instead of a surface, curved surface, at any point, whenever the light falls, that we will consider the tangential plane instead of that surface. Okay. Now, being done with this, we will talk about a specific curved surface, which is called paraboloid. Now, um, it has a lot of practical applications, which I'm talking, I will be talking about at the, ver at the very end of this lecture. And that's why I have chosen. And at the same time, it's curved, so it basically, you know, fills the, uh, uh, that, that scope which I would like to talk about, which is reflection of the curved surfaces. So what is paraboloid? <coughs> well, if you will consider XYZ coordinate system, and um, consider the plane XZ only. And if you will have a parabola here, Y is equal to its Z is equal to KX squared. So we are talking about this plane, XZ plane. And now we will rotate this parabola around the z-axis, which is the axis of rotation. What will be? Well, there will be some kind of a this kind of um, body, if you wish. So this is a parabola, paraboloid, which is a result of rotation um, of a parabola like this around the z-axis. Now, the three-dimensional uh, formula for this obviously is for the entire paraboloid. So this is just a parabola within xyz, xz uh, plane, and this is the equation of three-dimensional body called paraboloid. Now, what's interesting about this paraboloid? So let me tell you basically something which will be proven, so to speak. Um, if, you will, uh, if you will have a, a light which goes somewhere here from inside, it will hit the wall, it will hit the paraboloid surface, and it will reflect and it will hit the z-axis. Now, first of all, why, why does it hit the z-axis? Well, because of symmetry. If, it, if after this reflection it goes without crossing the z, it, it will b basically um, contradict the principle of rotational symmetry. So we have to have this point on the z, because otherwise, because if we will turn the paraboloid, it will not really, it will basically change into itself, right? So this particular thing also should be kind of changing into itself. But if you uh, miss the z-axis with a reflected light, it will not change to itself. So that's basically kind of obvious. Which means that instead of considering paraboloid surface and the tangential plane, at this particular point, I can just cut the whole thing. If I will cut it along the XZ plane, what will I have? Well, I will have only a parabola. I will have the beam of light goes here, reflected here, and that would be a tangential line. Instead of tangential surface, I will have a tangential line. So, I will because of this rotational symmetry, I can consider the flat uh, picture uh, within the XZ plane. This is X and this is Z. And I will examine what ex where exactly this point is located. Well, relatively, let's say, to original uh, origin of coordinates. Now, 
why do they choose the paraboloid and parabola in this particular case? Because a very interesting thing. If I will go with another beam, it will reflect into the same point. So basically that's what's very important. It's very important for applications because if this is the light from, let's say, sun, and we have concentrated all these beams into one point, we can boil the water here and generate electricity. Or if, if we can put a source of light at this point, it will reflect as a parallel beam of light, and that's how projectors are, um, uh, are working. So it's very important, this parabolic um, uh, form of our curve, or paraboloid form of actual body which makes this type of application. So that's my goal to find out how exactly this reflection goes and prove that it will all go into one particular point which is called the focal point. So that's my plan for this lecture. I'm going to prove this particular property of parabola. So whenever the beam of light goes from at any distance from the z-axis it will still go into, um, into the focal point. Okay. So, I have explained my plan, now let's do it. And to do it, I need to draw a picture with all these details, it's kind of complicated. So I have this picture on my phone, so I will not... Okay. So, first of all, let me just draw the axis of sin, axis of coordinates. So this is z, and this is x. Okay, now, now we have to draw a parabola. So parabola would be something like this. Well, let me use maybe another color. I'll use light. Okay. Hope it's visible. Okay, this is my parabola. I hope it's visible enough. Okay, next I have to have a tangential line to this parabola at the point of the beam. Okay, so where is my, my beam would be, let's say, here. Well, let me start from the tangential line. It's something like this. This is my tangential line. This is the point where the ray of light comes and this is perpendicular and normal to my uh, line or to tangential line and this is a reflected light. Okay, so let me just continue to do this. Now I need the letters. Okay, so this is C, this is A, this is B, and this is Z. And this is E. That's it? Okay, now this is angles, this is incident, this is reflection. They are equal to each other, obviously. And incidentally, right now, so QI is equal to QR equals, I mean not Q, it's theta, sorry. It's theta. It looks like Q, and that's why I mixed it. It's theta. 
Greek. So theta, theta i, theta incidence uh, angle and uh, r, which is uh, reflection angle, are equal to each other. The beam of light is reflected against um, tangential line, which we were talking about that reflection against a curved line is the same as reflection of the tangential uh, line at the same point. And the beam of light goes first down to B. This is vertical, parallel to Z. And it reflects and goes to the line C. Now CD is parallel to x-axis. I need this. Now, what I'm going to calculate right now, based on this distance, let's call it A, uh, distance from uh, distance of the beam of light from the z-axis. I will calculate this OC length. If my OC length <coughs> doesn't depend on A, doesn't depend on how far my uh, ray of light comes to the uh, parabola, that would prove that all parallel to Z line beams of light will gather in the same point. So, if OC is independent from A, I will have this property proven. So, let's just basically start to calculate the OC. Now, the parabola should have some kind of an equation, right? So it's z equals to kx square. That's my parabola. So all I need to know is OC as a function of a, well, and k, obviously. And if that function doesn't depend on a, then I'm, I have proven that all the lights coming here or here or here or here, they will all gather in one point c. OK. So. What's important is this angle. Let's think about what this angle is. It's between tangential line and horizontal line. What is this? It's angle between vertical line and tangential line. So as you see, angle theta i and this angle b e um, a. B E A. They are congruent. Why? Because this is perpendicular to this, and this is perpendicular to the normal, right? So again, the uh, this E A is perpendicular to E B, and <coughs> E B is perpendicular to normal to the surface. So. These two angles are formed by mutually perpendicular lines. So it's something like this. This is one, and this is another. So this is perpendicular to this, and this is perpendicular to this. So they are congruent. So that's very important. This is also theta. OK, great. Now let's think. Let's analyze, basically. How can we find out what is OC? Well, OC can be found as now, CD is parallel to the x-axis, so OC can be found from AB minus BD, okay? So that's my analysis. I'm thinking about how can I find OC. Well, I can find if I know AB and BD. So it's AB minus BD equals AB I know, because if this is A, and this is parabola, which is this. So AB is equal to KA square minus BD. 
So Ka squared is known. Bd I don't know. So how can I find Bd? Well, Bd can be very much related to angle this one and CG. It's CG times uh, cotangents, right? Cotangents of this angle uh, CBD. Angle CBD. So CG I know, this is A. CG is equal to OA because they are parallel and this is the distance of the beam of light from the z-axis. So, times cotangents of angle CBD. Now, A is known. So this is a known thing. I have to know what's the angle CBD. Well, it's easy. Angle CBD is pi minus 2 theta, right? So, angle CBD equals pi, the whole thing, right, minus 2 theta. So to know the cotangents of this, I need to know the theta, right? Okay, fine. Now, what's important is that this theta and this theta is equal to this one. So, how can I find out this? Well, it's actually easy because this is a tangential line to a parabola. Now, we all know that property of the tangential line. Tangential line has the ten, uh, the basically the tangent of the angle between tangential line and the x-axis is the first derivative of the function, right? This is my function. Now, its derivative is equal to 2kx, and at point x is equal to 2, my z is equal to 2ka. So this is the tangent of theta. So I know the tangent of theta, all I have to find out is a cotangent of angle CBD, which is pi minus um, uh, 2 theta. Okay. <coughs> um, now, uh, cotangent of pi minus 2 theta is equal to minus cotangents of 2 theta. This is a plain trigonometry. And again, if you forgot about properties of this, you can always refer to the mass 14th prerequisite course where it's all explained. And now this is um, cotangent. I don't remember the formula for cot cotangents. I do remember tan uh, the tangent. Um, now the tangent of two uh, angles is equal to two tangent of angle divided by one minus tangent square of angle. Now the cotangent is reverse. So that's equal to uh, minus uh, 1 minus tangent square theta divided by 2 tangent theta. So that's minus, and this minus, so let me just put it here. So cotangent of angle CBD equals to uh, tangent theta tangent square theta uh, minus and this minus I will change it minus 1 divided by 2 tangent theta equals to 2ka. So it's uh, 
Let me just, just use this one. I don't need it. Tangent square is 4k square a square minus 1 divided by 2 times 2k a, so it's 4k a. Am I right? Okay. So this is a cotangent of angle CBD. C, B, D. Cotangent of this. So, if I will multiply it by A, I will have B, D. So, B, D is equal to A times this. Now, A will go off the denominator. So, I will have 4K. 4K square A square minus 1. So I've got the BD. Now, if I will subtract it from the KA square, I will get my OC. So OC is equal to KA square minus this. KA square minus 4K 4k square a square minus 1. <coughs> now the common denominator is obviously 4k. And what do I have? 4k. 4k times k a square, 4k square a square minus this, so it's minus 4k square a square plus 1. K A square goes down, and what do I have? I have O C is equal to one over four K. As you see, it's independent of A. A was cancelled everywhere. So what does it mean? It means that this beam at the distance a and this beam at the ends uh, at the distance less than a or this beam at the uh, uh, at the distance uh, more than a from the z they will all go into the same point into the point which is called focal point so parabola like this has a focal point at the distance 1 over 4k from its bottom. Always. <coughs> That's a very interesting property of parabola and obviously paraboloid if you will go into a three dimensional. And as I was basically talking in the very beginning, there are many different applications. So the obvious application is uh, the uh, uh, you have a flashlight, right? So you have some kind of a uh, source of um, uh, light in the focal point and this is some kind of a paraboloid um, mirror and then all the lights from this source of light will go parallel to the z-axis in one direction so that's how we project light onto something so the mirror which is around this source of light must be parabolic to really do the job to parallelize the, the lights um, you some of you actually might think that it's actually part of the sphere something like this and the source of light here that's wrong it's not part of the sphere it's part of the paraboloid it should be something like this then all the lights will go into one direction will be reflected into one direction. It's not part of the sphere, it's part of the paraboloid. It's very important. Now, what other applications? Well, everybody saw the dish antenna. Now, dish antenna also has parabolic form, 
I mean, obviously, you cannot really expand it to infinity. It has certain boundaries, so you have parabola like this, and obviously lights which go here will not hit the mirror and will be lost. But the greater the height of this parabola, the more light will be captured. Or, if we are talking about radio signals from satellite, you have an uh, antenna dish which is uh, uh, directed to uh, um, a satellite which has a constant position um, on the sur uh, above the surface of the Earth. So it basically circling the Earth with exactly the same speed Earth itself is circulating. So uh, you have the same thing. So you have many different um, arrays of radio waves are collected by this dish and are reflected towards the focus point, focal point, where some kind of a um, receiver is located. So what other applications? Well, something which is not really very scientific, but whenever somebody doesn't hear a remote sound, people are doing something like this, right? So that's, the, that's your parabolic dish, so to speak. I mean, obviously it's not perfect, but it helps. It, the sound goes here and then it focuses to the ear. And there are some other applications which, uh, which we actually can think about. Well, that's it. My purpose was to explain how the light is concentrated by parabolic mirror in one focal point, just as an example of reflection of the curved surface. That's it. I would suggest you to read these notes for this lecture on, the, uh, on this website. Um, the notes contain a much better picture than I have drawn right now. It has certain colors and uh, you can always click on it and with the right button and uh, open it in another tab on your, um, on your browser. It will be bigger and uh, more visible, all the details. So you have to go to unisor.com physics 14 course and choose the uh, part of the course called waves uh, and in that part you have properties of light and one of these properties is reflection of the parabolic um, reflector that's the name of the lecture uh, now I forgot to mention probably that the website is completely free there are no ads no strings attached you don't have to even sign in if you don't want to, if you just want to listen to the lecture and uh, take, the, take exams for instance, there are exams, there are problems. So this is a good source of knowledge, good luck, thank you.